So let's go back to our top story now. And in return for huge new loans, Greece must try to reduce its debt to 121% of GDP. And it must accept the presence of outside economic monitors in Athens. Dr Oliver Mark Hartwich is an economics researcher fellow, research fellow at the Centre for Independent Studies. And he joins us now from Sydney. Good morning. European leaders have obviously welcomed this deal after marathon talks. But will it work? Probably not, not just because there are still many question marks over the deal. We have to remember that now it's the task of parliaments to approve the deal and many parliaments in, across Europe are quite hostile to further bailouts. Apart from that, we have a problem with uh, the debtors because they also, sorry, the creditors, they also have to agree to the debt rescheduling um, that, that was agreed last night. And then, of course, there is a big question mark over the International Monetary Fund because how much the International Monetary Fund is actually contributing to the deal is not quite clear. At the moment, it looks as if it could be just 50 15 billion euros, and that's uh, considerably less than the IMF paid first time around for the first bailout package. So there are many uncertainties about that deal, and the problem is, of course, even if they get this deal through, it is still not quite clear whether it will actually work. And so then, do you think that a third bailout may be in order sometime down the track? Uh, it certainly looks like this, because as you said, under the deal, and under the most op optimistic assumptions, really, Greece is going to 121% debt to GDP by 2020. I mean, that's eight years down the track, and nobody really believes that in the following eight years, Greece won't need any more money, because, I mean, that's basically what's happened over the past two years. You give Greece money, Greece goes into further dis recession and decline, and then, of course, the data deteriorate and Greece needs more money. And I think we're likely to see the continuation of this kind of policy. So is this just delaying the inevitable and that's another great uh, default? Yes, and I think that's what most market analysts now agree on, that Grexit, the Greek exit from the Eurozone, is now inevitable. And that would also probably include default. So I think there are three things that really need to happen now. Greece needs to exit the Eurozone. Greece needs to default on its debt, at least 85% of its debt, because otherwise it can't carry the debt burden anymore, and then needs to devalue the new currency, the new drachma, whatever you may call it, that they will introduce later, because otherwise they have no chance of economic recovery. In the interim, this deal does need to be passed by Greece's parliament, so it needs to have the approval. And then there's obviously the election that's scheduled for April. Do you think that these austerity measures will be implemented um, after that election? Well, interesting question, because the Europeans, of course, have asked all Greek parties now to give written commitments to stick to the, measure, to the measures, even after the election. However, you can't quite be sure how much these commitments are really worth after the election, because you have to figure out that currently PASOK, for example, the Socialist Party, is down to just 8% in the polls, and the Conservative Party may just be around the 20% mark. And what you will get in the April election, if it goes ahead, may be a parliament that's quite radicalized, where you have hard left, party, the hard left parties that are resisting any kind of deal and any kind of austerity measures. So I think there is a lot of political uncertainty still on the ground in Greece. And it's interesting to see how the markets have reacted. The US has had a, a big jump, and then European markets reacted somewhat more cautiously. What can we read into that? Not much, actually, because over the last uh, years, I mean, whenever markets rallied, you had to be very, very careful because they're really acting on just headlines, and then it takes them two or three days to digest the news and find out that actually in the details, in the fine print of the deals, there are some nasty bits hidden. And so I wouldn't really read too much into markets because they have always been too optimistic when finance ministers agreed on something, and then they found out later that it didn't work. Oliver Hartwich, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you.